Come on in, welcome to my home. Today we are talking about Christmas burnout and how to avoid it and how to get over that whole out of the Christmas spirit thing. I mean, it can be a major, major problem. About this time of year, you're finding out that those Christmas presents that you ordered in October won't be in until March. That's a problem. You're also probably finding out that you forgot to do something or your genetically engineered reindeer aren't going to be ready in time for that Christmas display. Why don't we leave those things for, like, other people? Okay, let's talk about this. The first thing that you need to do once you feel like you're getting into that total Christmas burnout feeling, that feeling that you are being overwhelmed by Christmas, is figure out what you actually need to do. And I'm not talking about the things that you want to do, the things that it would be nice to do. No, I'm talking about the things that you actually truly need to do. Make a list. Make a list of those things that, you know, there is no other choice but to do. Not things that you are like, oh, that'll make a nice Instagram picture, or, oh, that will be something that we'll remember. No, first make a list of what you need to do, because once you start looking at that list, it starts to feel less overwhelming. It starts to feel like, hey, I can accomplish these things because I'm no longer looking at this at what will look nice, what will be acceptable. No, you're looking at this as this is what actually has to be done. And once you get a grasp of what actually has to be done, you know what you can do? You can can do it. And here's the big thing about this. A lot of times people want to go into this with the whole I have all the Christmas spirit. I'm dressed up like an elf as I'm doing all of my Christmas cards. Does that really matter? No, they're Christmas cards. No one's going to know that you're dressed up like an elf unless you take an Instagram picture of it and post it. But then again, is that really something you need to do? Probably not. You don't have to be the world's merriest Christmas person. No, you just have to get things done. And some things have to be done whether you like it or not. Now, if you are trying to get into the Christmas spirit, here are a few things that might help you. You could try playing some Christmas music. Okay, Google. Play Christmas music. Okay, check out this Christmas music station on YouTube Music. I personally have found that playing Christmas music does have a tendency to get me back into that Christmas mood. So does watching my favorite Christmas movie. That can really get me back into that Christmas mood. Or just doing something that is Christmas related. Like making something Christmas related. Making something that I want to do versus something that I have to do. Because sometimes, even though you have that list of stuff that you have to do, sometimes you just need to take a break and think about you. I have some ideas about things that you can do. Okay, for this I'm taking, this is just a simmer potpourri, I'm taking an orange which is not in the world's greatest shape. Put that right there, put that, and that's just a put, uh, slow cooker pot, there we go, and then instead of wasting the fruit, I'm just going to take the orange peel. Now you can add whatever spices you like. I've got a little clove, I'm just going to add a few. Cardamom is an interesting one. That really won't do a whole lot. Star anise. This is quite strong. So I'm only going to add like two, like half a star. Oh, and you can smell it. Peppermint sticks. Two of those. This is my own dried ginger root, dried it myself. And then I have dried cranberries, which I did dry myself also. I'm going to add two handfuls of those. If you had pine or something like that, you can add those. Alright, I filled it, I'm going to fill this with water, and now this will scent the entire house.
thing to do is eggnog and I'm not trying to go all out with this. The recipe is linked down below, but these are just uh, egg beaters or some sort of egg thing that comes in a carton with your milk, your sugar. I'm using sea salt. You can use regular table salt. We'll just take this over to the oven, heat it up, and then we'll add the rest of our milk. This will make it so much easier to do. So simple, it is so good. Once you've brought the milk mixture up to temperature, put it into a jar, try not to spill it. Add the rest of your milk, a splash of vanilla, then we're going to just let that cool. Another one that you can do, which is really easy and nice this time of year, is white chocolate sauce. We're starting off with uh, heavy cream or whipping cream and then we're going to take it over to the stove and bring it up to a boil. Once that starts boiling I'm going to add my butter and my white chocolate and turn off the heat. Then what we're going to do is we are just going to take this and using the residual heat stir it. Once our white chocolate sauce is hot Everything should be melted. I'm just going to pour it into a container. And now I have some super easy white chocolate sauce. Now none of those things were things that absolutely had to be done, but they're nice things that you can do. And you don't even have to share some of those things with anybody else. You could take the candy, eat it yourself. Eggnog could be yours. The white chocolate sauce absolutely you can put it in your coffee you could put it in a smoothie you could do whatever you want with it that's the cool part about this you need to make time for you so that you have time for other people that's really really important because if you don't make time for yourself you really won't feel like doing anything for other people and you know what else can help you get into the Christmas mood? Not doing anything Christmas related. Yeah. Maybe you're going to listen to just plain music. Not Christmas music, nothing that involves Christmas, just doing something that involves, you know, nothing. Maybe you're just going to take a nap or read a book or do something along those lines. One of the things that people are finding is that Christmas can be so overwhelming that they just need to pull back and say, Hey, I need to take a break and do something else. Which is absolutely fine. You're going to find out that a lot of the things that you look up, so especially when you look at Christmas burnout, is all about working. People are working so much and then not having time to do anything Christmas related. That's interesting and everything. There's more to it than just working. Part of the Christmas spirit is you know, the Christmas spirit. Finding your Christmas spirit. Don't worry about what everybody tells you what the Christmas spirit should be. No, find your own. Figure out what works out for you. Maybe you're coming up with new traditions. Maybe you're getting rid of old traditions. Is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. Things change, and change is good. Change can be exciting. Change can be wonderful. Maybe everything isn't a Norman Rockwell painting, okay, but then nothing was ever a Norman Rockwell painting except for a Norman Rockwell painting. There were always those areas that what we do with nostalgia is we paint over the bad parts and then we just keep the good parts. And that's great and everything, and maybe one of the things that you can do to help yourself get over this whole Christmas burnout is to, you know, keep a log of the good things that have happened during this time. How were you going to do that? Well, there are a couple things. If you're one of those people who loves to write things down, get a journal. Write down your happy Christmas thoughts. If you're not one of those people who doesn't, who, uh, does, who loves to write things down, take pictures. Probably have a phone or something so that that way you can document what about Christmas you like, what worked. You can also document what didn't work. I wouldn't necessarily put that in a spot where you see all the time, but I would put it somewhere so that that way you know what did and didn't work. So that way as you go back to this, you can look back and say, Hey, this is cool. Another thing that you can do, which I love doing this time of year, is pulling out those old pictures of past Christmases and seeing what it was like. 
What things do you remember? What did you do? Telling your family story of Christmas might be wonderful. It might really truly help you get into that Christmas mood. And that's a good thing. And if you never get into the Christmas mood, okay, that is a thing. But the thing to remember about that is don't rain on everybody else's parade. If you're not in the Christmas mood, infecting everybody else with your bad mood is not a cool thing at all. Not a cool thing at all whatsoever. And if you have to say, I'm not really in that great headspace to go to your whatever Christmas party and that sort of stuff. Hopefully they will respect that. Hopefully that this isn't something else. Maybe you should talk to somebody about your feelings about what's going on right now. Talk to a professional, talk to a friend. That's really good. This is actually a wonderful time to connect with people. Connecting with people at Christmas time because people seem to want to connect a lot right now. I think it's because of tradition or getting that old family feeling or those sort of things all blended in together. That, that's really good. Maybe you're just going to sit at home and vegetate. Okay, that's wonderful. The other thing that you really need to stop doing is stop thinking of your Christmas not being at so great because your Christmas doesn't compare to everyone else's Christmas that you see on social media. Because, guess what? It might never. Even the Christmas that you see on my social media is a curated Christmas of my, of my life. It's not my everyday life. I mean, even this situation right here. This is a little bit fake. I have extra lights, I have lights on in the background, simply because this is the Christmas I want to present to you. And is that okay? Yeah, as long as you realize that my Christmas isn't exactly like that, and it's okay. So guess what? Your Christmas doesn't have to be like every other million dollar star's Christmas. I'm not sure if you have a million dollars to make it like a million dollar star's Christmas, and that's absolutely okay. And be realistic with your wants and needs at Christmas time. Sure, you might want a PS5, which I have heard are really hard to get a hold of right now. You might not get it, just letting you know. Have real expectations of what's going to happen this Christmas. And if you know things are actually going to be really bad, try to avoid them. This is a great time of year where you can limit the exposure to things which would bring you down, things which would make you feel bad. But you can maximize this exposure to things which will make you feel happy. Sunny days, crisp, cool air, if those things make you happy, do more of that. Open your windows, turn off the heat when you do that, it's cold outside, and let the fresh air come in. I don't have to be like the Griswolds and totally deck out my house. I can do Christmas however I want to do it. And if I don't want to do it, I can do Christmas that way, too. There's nothing wrong with how you want to do Christmas or how you need to do Christmas to make your life easier or better. That's a whole big thing. Christmas shouldn't be such a strain on your life that you just feel overwhelmed and overburdened. And if it is, maybe you should, like, cut some things out. You don't have to hand letter each card that you're going to send out. In fact, you don't even have to send out cards. If you want to, great. If you don't want to, great. Do what works best for you. We've gotten these whole ideas about Christmas because this is what we've seen on TV, this is what we've seen in the movies, is that Christmas becomes these extravagant things, and it doesn't have to. You can make it as elaborate or as simple as you want. You've seen my Christmas decorating video, if not, click right up there. Uh, this year I stretched myself, I guess you would say. This isn't normally how I would do my Christmas decorations. I did something different because I want to make this Christmas a little bit different. Will I ever do these Christmas decorations again? I, I don't know. Will I keep the decorations? Well, yes, of course, because I didn't really buy anything this year. I will keep these decorations. I will reuse them, not necessarily in this order. And that might be a thing which helps you get it back into the Christmas mood. Maybe it's time that you redid your Christmas decorations. Maybe it's time that you did something completely different. Starting a new Christmas tradition is just one of the coolest things that you could possibly do at Christmas time. I love new Christmas traditions. And let's talk about your family. You decide who your family is that you want to get together with. Do what's best for you and what's best for them. Worry about that. Maybe the family doesn't want to get together for dinner because it's just such a tremendous thing. 
to try to get everybody's schedules together. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's okay. Be flexible. Maybe it does work. Maybe this is the most wonderful thing and you have the greatest time. Cool. See what works. See what doesn't work. Be open. Try enjoying it. And if you find out that you don't enjoy it, stop. Just make a new tradition. If you say or somebody tells you that no, they can't do anything, there could be a reason for it. Maybe you don't believe their uh, excuse. Is that really up to you to decide that they should be doing it? No, no it's not. No, not at all. So yeah, if somebody tells you that they can't do something, you're going to have to go with that. If somebody tells you that they don't want to do something, you're going to have to go with that. Simply because you should not be forcing your own Christmas ideas on somebody else. You wouldn't want that forced upon you, so why are you doing it to somebody else? One of the things that we need to do as a society is having better, clear-cut, open communication because that's really important. And if your clear-cut open communication says, hey, this year we're just going to forego getting together for Christmas, then this year you're just going to forego getting together for Christmas. Maybe this year only part of the family's getting together for Christmas. That's okay. Don't make this the end of the world so you didn't all get together. Don't make this the whole it's the darkest hour kind of thing. Make this one of those, well, this is just something that happened. Maybe next year will be different. Maybe next year won't be different, but enjoy it. Make the most out of what you've got. It's one of the things where I've looked at Christmas, I've looked at what I actually need to do, and then I've pushed back on the things that I have idealized. Things that I have said, well, you know, this is one of those great things that I should be doing. Let me know, what are you doing for Christmas for you to make your life easier? Because like I said, some of the, my suggestions you're going to be like, Oh, I never thought about that. That would be nice. Some of my suggestions you're going to be like, That's just insane. And is that all right? Yes. Yes, it is. Find what works for you and go with it. Try something new. Don't try something new. Maybe you're not even decorating this year for Christmas. Christmas, and if that makes you happy, then that's what you should go for. Make yourself happy. Maybe we should do an entire year next year where we try to make ourselves happy. Make yourself happy. If you can extend that happiness to other people, that's wonderful. If right now you can't extend that happiness to other people, that's okay too. Don't be so hard on yourself. Well, let me know down in the comments what you are doing for your Christmas traditions or what you're doing this year for Christmas and how you're making your Christmas better. At this time, I would like to take this chance to really thank my patrons who really help keep this channel going, help make this even possible. Without the patrons that I have, I don't think we'd be able to keep doing this. If you want to join that fun and friendly group, and we have lots of great discussions, and we also talk about things which are coming up, you can help me decide what the next video should be. So let me know, so go ahead and check out Patreon, hit that link. If you are looking for last minute Christmas ideas, guess what, that's going to come up next week. Yes, next week I will have some last minute Christmas ideas that you can do. But let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to hit subscribe and share this video. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video and I hope I get to see you again the next time you stop by.